Our one more thought this week comes from Dave McCormick, a man who's run for the Senate in Pennsylvania, run Bridgewater, served with Treasury Secretary Hank Paulson during the great financial crisis, and commanded troops in Operation Desert Storm. This week, Dave published his book on what he has learned and about the course correction he believes we need to make. The book is Superpower in Peril, A Battle Plan to Renew America. And in the end, it comes down to what Dave calls transformational leadership. One of the main themes of the book is transformational leadership, the need for transformational leadership. Uh, you've gotten the opportunity to lead as well as observe leaders through your career at West Point, in Desert Storm, in the Treasury Department, at Bridgewater. Draw from that and give us an example or two of people you thought were exceptional leaders or moments of exceptional leadership. Yeah, well, you know, I, you talk about the uh, of transforming the country, and the motivation for the book was, you know, taking the country in the right direction. And you could have all the great ideas in the world, but if you don't have leaders that, first of all, can can win elections, <laughs> so we need leaders who can win elections, and then take those ideas in our in our republic and, and make them reality, then um, then you're not going to go anywhere. And so I talk about the kind of leadership we need, and uh, you know, there's so many definitions of leadership. And despite having grown up in all these places and studied leadership. It's an amorphous concept. And so I tried to outline four things that I think are so critical to leadership. One's vision. You have to, you have, to have a sense of, of where you're headed. Ronald Reagan was the best example of that, the simplicity, the clarity. And when we talk about courage, we talk about the courage to uh, you know, run up, uh, run up the, the, the hill or go into combat. We, we have so many courageous military. But there's courage that goes well beyond that. It's the courage to stand alone uh, in, in pursuit of your uh, your convictions. It's the courage to make tough decisions. The third is humility. And Benjamin Franklin wrote a lot about leadership, but humility was uh, the area that he, uh, he spent a lot of time on. And I think that one's critical because humility allows you to recognize you're, you're often going to be wrong. It allows you to draw in others. It allows you to learn from and, and get better because of your mistakes. And, uh, and we see this too, too rarely among leaders because you know you start to be the leader and all of a sudden people keep telling you how smart you are and they laugh at your jokes and keeping that humility through the course of your leadership journey is is really critical and then the final one i talk about is caring and uh you know i don't think we see enough of this today but people sense when you're in it for something bigger than yourself and in it for them and to bring them along and um, those are the things in my career um, in terms of the humility hank paulson sticks out in my mind because Hank, uh, I worked for him during the financial crisis and, and he, you know, we got a lot wrong. And, uh, you know, when you're in a crisis, you're going to try to do things and you, you learn from uh, the feedback you get and you make mistakes and, you're, and the ability to evolve quickly in the middle of a crisis, get feedback, respond and not have your ego tied up into, oh, we decided to do this, therefore we're going to stick to it. I think really in many ways saved the country because he, uh, he was adaptable. And here he is, uh, you know, a bigger than life figure, the CEO of Goldman Sachs, the Treasury Secretary, you know, a, a remarkable leader, but, but one who constantly asked himself whether he was wrong and constantly made changes when he thought he was. And uh, he's one of the people that jumps out in my mind as a gracious and, uh, and successful leader.